If we do not understand God's ways, then we will go through life thinking that the difficulties we encounter are set in place to set us back. In reality, God intentionally aligns obstacles in the form of tests to set us up for promotion. Nothing worthwhile in life comes without a bit of opposition because it is in the opposition that we grow stronger and become higher versions of ourselves. Therefore, God allows tests and trials so that he can use them as implements of advancement. God allows us to go through a series of seemingly random and unnecessary circumstances to prove what is inside of our hearts. After we have passed the test, after we have been proven, God can then graduate us to the next level. However, if we continue to fail test, we will continue to walk around the same mountain, wander around the same wilderness. We will remain stagnated, unable to move into the beautiful life that God has mapped out for us. Because like any institution of higher learning, God will continue to give us the same test until we pass and he can promote us to the next level. Hi, my name is Alicia and today we're discussing God's path way to promotion and why it is important that we pass the test that he allows in our lives. I will also be interpreting six dreams. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. In a dream, I saw a woman dressed in all white from head to toe. She walked up steps to what appeared to be the White House. Once she walked up the steps, she walked through a door where there was a waiting area with a concierge. She handed him a slip of paper. On this paper was a grade of 100%. The woman walked to the balcony and looked down and saw people draped in gold from head to toe dancing on a ballroom floor. After the concierge saw that she had a passing score, she was then escorted to that ballroom. On her way, she was transformed from wearing white to wearing all gold like the others she witnessed from the balcony on the ballroom floor. So the very first thing that I noticed about this dream was that the woman was wearing all white. White represents something that is of God. It represents purity. So then the woman walks up steps, but not only does she walk up steps, but she's walking through a door into the White House. Therefore, this represents double elevation because not only does steps represent elevation because you're going higher, the White House represents something that is presidential. The word presidential is synonymous with the words influential and sovereign. We know that God is sovereign and that he is in control. Therefore, in this dream, the sovereign God is leading this woman to a place of influence, a place of elevation. And he is doing so because of what she has in her hands, a passing score of 100%. Because this woman has this passing score of 100%, this means that she had to go through a period of testing, a series of difficulties, a series of stress. What's interesting is that 99% would have been passing. Even 75% would have been a passing score. So why was the score of 100% used in this dream? In the word of God, the number 100 represents the fullness of time. It represents completion and fulfillment. In the book of Genesis, God gave Abraham the promise that he would be the father of many nations. Nations. But Abraham and his wife were well beyond their childbearing years. Together, he and his wife were about 200 years old. Why did God not approach Abraham in his youth with this promise? Why did he not approach him when he was younger? At a time when Abraham and Sarah would not have had a problem conceiving a child. Why wait until all earthly odds were stacked against them? Because God is sovereign and he is not bound by earthly restrictions and norms. He has the capability to defy and super proceed seemingly impossible situations. God will often allow us to get into situations where there appear to be no way out so that he can test our faith. So when God gives Abraham this promise, what he is really doing is inducting him into the higher learning institution of God, where he would be tested on his faith. And while Abraham most certainly did fail on occasion, scripture says that ultimately he considered not the deadness of his own body. He considered the God who promised faithful to fulfill meaning that Abraham had the faith to look at a dead situation, ignore what he saw with his physical eyes and envision what God had promised through his spiritual eyes. He trusted God to bring into fulfillment what he had promised. And at the age of 100, his son Isaac was born. So the woman in this dream had gone through a series of testing of her faith. God had given her promises in a time where her situation looked bleak. It looked as though it would be impossible to accomplish. And in her own strength, it 
would be impossible, but in the strength of God, all things are possible. In fact, her white clothes in this dream implicates that God used her difficult situations to purify her faith. And after this woman walks toward the White House, and after she walks up steps, and after she walks through the door and hands her a passing score of 100 to the concierge, she then sees these golden people on the ballroom floor dancing. She then becomes one of these golden people. But why were they gold? First Peter 1 and 7 says, this makes you very happy. Rejoice in this. Even though now for a short time, different kinds of troubles may make you sad. You have had to suffer various kinds of testings, trials. Those troubles, testings, trials come to prove that your faith is pure. The purity of your faith Tested and proven authenticity is worth more, more precious, more valuable than gold, which can be proved to be pure, tested and proved authentic by fire, but can and will be destroyed. But the purity, tested and proven authenticity of your faith will bring you praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is shown to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this scripture says that we should be happy, that we should rejoice when God brings tests in our lives to prove the authenticity of our faith because that is more valuable than gold. We know that all gold is not created equal. Caritage is defined as the measurement of the purity of gold alloyed with other metals. 24 karat gold is considered pure gold because it is not mixed with any other metals. It is 100% pure gold. In contrast, 18 karat gold contains only 75% gold because it is mixed with 25% of other metals. Thus, the value of gold is based on the level of its purity. The purity of this gold is based on how much it has been reflected find by the fire. The woman in this dream could only access the next level of her life after she presented her score of 100% because this represents the fact that she had been tested, that she had been refined by the fire and that she had no mixture. She had been purified by the tests of God. This is why we should be happy and rejoice when God allows various trials and troubles and tests to come into our lives. There are only certain levels that we can access without having gone through the process of purification. God can only level you up as high as you are willing to be refined by his fiery test and trials. Therefore, that situation, that person, that circumstance that continuously brings fire into your life is there for the sole purpose to draw everything in you out of you that is not becoming to who you need to be. The test is there to bring value out of you, to draw greatness out of you, to bring wealth out of you, and to bring purpose out of you. A dream was submitted to me by Anonymous in the United States. She writes, I dreamed I was shopping in a store called Penny's. There, I purchased many beautiful clothes. I don't know exactly what the clothes were. I just knew that they were pretty. I gave some of the clothes away. The total cost of the clothes was $227. As I was leaving the store, I realized that I had forgotten my prize. I turned around to go back and get it. The clerk there realized that I was due a prize. When I was looking over her dream, it immediately reminded me of the story of the poor widow woman in the book of Mark. Jesus was sitting near the temple's money box while people walked by and put money in. Many of the rich were pleased with themselves as they placed large sums inside of that box. And then there was this poor widow woman who comes by and places two copper coins, which was worth less than a penny inside of that box. Jesus does not commend those who places hundreds and possibly thousands of dollars in that box. He commends this woman who places less than a penny inside of that box because she faithfully gives out of a place of need while everyone else was given out of a place of abundance. It's easy to give of yourself when you have a lot to give, when there's an overabundance. It is a test of your faith to give when you have very little. So this woman in this dream is possibly in a place where she gives of herself, even when she feels as though she is in need. This may not even be financial. It could be emotionally or relationally. But what she may not have realized was that God was allowing her to go through these tests. He was allowing her to continually give of herself when she felt as though she had nothing left to give. He is using this situation as a means to bless her abundantly. She ends up with all of these beautiful clothes and she does not even know what the beautiful clothes were 
were. She does not even know what it is that she's carrying. Therefore, this woman does not realize the value of who she is. She does not realize the authority that she carries. She then pays $227 for the clothes. As we discussed in another dream, the number 200 represents human insufficiency and God's sufficiency. Further, I was drawn to Proverbs 27, which says that fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but a person is tested by being praised. Therefore, as fire tests gold, so does the praise by humans test humans. The rich people in the book of Mark fail the test of praise because they give only to be praised by humans, to be acknowledged by others. But the poor woman with the penny passes the test because she gives all that she has in the face of everyone potentially judging her gift. And because of this, she does not earn the praise of humans, but she earns the praise of Jesus. So the woman who submitted this dream has possibly been in a place where she has been given to others to the point where she feels overdrawn at times. But in her insufficiency, God will prove himself sufficient and her praise will come from him. In this dream, she also forgets a prize which she goes back to get. But what is this prize? Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, I keep trying to reach, pursuing, chasing the goal and the prize God called me to the life above, heavenward, upward, through and in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I know that I have not yet reached that goal, taken hold of it, but there is one thing I always do, forgetting the past, things that are behind and straining towards, stretching, reaching forward to what is ahead. The prize is not about what we can tangibly hold in our hands to brag about and to gain accolades from this world. It's about what we can release from our hands and give to this world. I dreamed of a real family that I know of. This family is comprised of a husband who is a pastor, the pastor's wife, and their children. However, in this dream, the focus was on the wife. I saw her at various phases of her life. For example, I watched her as she stood in line and then someone would come and try to take her position in that line. She had to fight for what she deserved. Then I saw where there were people inside of their church who would try to come up against them, who would try them on different levels. In the final scene, I saw the family inside of their bedroom where the pastor's wife becomes sick all of a sudden. The sickness literally took the breath out of her. It made her weak and it made her tired. However, once she sees the ambulance coming, she stood up, strengthened, and walked to the door smiling as though she were never sick. It was as though she was instantaneously healed. So in this dream, what could have looked like a woman going through a series of drama was actually a series of tests. She went through a season where she was overlooked, where she felt as though she had to fight to be in a position where she rightfully belonged. Further, there were members inside of their church that would attempt to demean them, to try them, but ultimately it was God trying them. Because when God has called you to something that is beyond yourself, when he has called you to a greater portion, he will test you. He must prove the authenticity of your faith. He needs to know that it's real. Lastly, there was a test of sickness that comes into this woman's life. God allows me to see inside of their bedroom. And as we have discussed in prior videos, bedroom simply represents intimacy with God. It represents things that are private and things that are behind the scenes. This is important to remember because sometimes we can look on the outside of someone's life. We can see glitz and we can see glam, but we don't see the hell, the fire, the pain the test that they had to walk through. We don't witness the valley of the shadow of death. We only see the table that has been prepared before them. But God sees. He not only saw this family struggle, but he also witnessed their faithfulness and consistency. God calls Job by name and asks Satan, have you considered my servant Job? God enlisted Job to be tested by Satan over and over again. He allows his children to be taken away. He allows his finances to be destroyed. He allows his body to be riddled with disease. But in his sovereignty, God does not allow Satan to have his life. So in this dream, I do not know what type of illness this woman suffered. It could have been something emotional. It could have been something physical. But what I do know was that it was quite debilitating. It took her breath away. However, once she hears the ambulance in this dream, she stands straight up. She is strengthened. Ambulances can represent a transition to healing and the help of God. So this would imply that this woman, this pastor's wife, has great faith in the God that she serves. Because even in a place of transition to her healing, she stood up and she was strong, meaning she had faith that God was going to completely heal her. She has the faith to know that when God speaks, no matter what situation she finds herself in, it can be near 
death, but God will always bring her out. God used this illness to increase her faith because he intends to use her greatly in the area of healing. God allowed every test. He allowed everything in Job's life to be destroyed so that he could ultimately give Job back double what he had lost. However, scripture reveals that during Job's transition from nothing to the double portion, he felt as though God was destroying his life and not healing it. It won't feel good when we're being torn down, when it feels as though our lives are being destroyed. But God allows the test. He allows these things so that he can build us back up in the way that he initially envisioned. So that we'll be sturdy enough to withstand the trials that will come along with the new blessings. Because double portions often comes with a double responsibility. God can not bless what he does not test. You will find that it is in the area where you're tested the most that God intends to bless you the most. He will test you where he intends to use you because you can't really have faith to help deliver somebody out of something that you've never experienced for yourself. If you're having severe financial struggles right now, know that God intends to bless you financially so that you can bless others. If you have been in a series of bad relationships, know that God intends to bless you relationally so that you can help bring others out of bad situations. I encourage you to look back over your life and examine what you have gone through. Examine what God is allowing. And there you will discover the test that you need to pass. There you will find where God is trying to prove your faith authentic. In a dream, I saw the earth moving toward me. I then saw a woman sitting in a white field at a school desk taking a written test. When she gets the correct answer, a harvest will begin to grow around her feet. Across the field was the same woman taking the same test. She was failing the test. And I noticed that nothing was growing around her feet. We know that whenever we see a globe in a dream, it simply represents the nations of this world. Then I see this young lady sitting in a white field taking a test. What does this white field represent? Jesus said to them, my food is to do what the one who sent me wants me to do, the will of the one who sent me, and to finish, complete his work. You have a saying, four more months till harvest. But look, behold, I tell you, open your eyes and look and lift your eyes up and see. The fields are ready, ripe, white for harvest now. So in this verse, the word field is Quora. It means a space of territory, inhabitants, ground, land, and regions. So in this verse, Jesus is saying that there's a harvest of souls awaiting them to complete the work of God. The fields are white. They're ready. They're ripe. There are inhabitants to reach, souls to touch, land to cover, and territory to claim. The interesting aspect of this dream is that this woman is sitting in two dimensions of herself. On one side, she's taking a test and she's passing. And on the other, side, she is taking a test and she is failing. She is at a crossroads in her life. Because she is actually passing the test on one side of this field, this implies that she knows what she needs to do. She knows the test that she needs to pass in order to evolve and to grow. And there's this other version of herself that is indifferent towards this test. There's a scripture in Romans that says, I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Have you ever been in a situation where you know that God has placed a test before you? You know the right thing to do, but you can't determine whether or not it's worth passing or ignoring. You know what is right, but you'd rather continue doing what is wrong because it appears as though you've been doing right all your life and right never brings you any fruit. However, in this dream, for every right answer that this young lady got correct, there was fruit, there was a harvest growing around her feet, but she could not see this harvest. Therefore, it can seem as though when we're doing the right thing that is not producing anything in our lives, but it is producing, it's just that we can't see it. But when you continue to do the right thing over and over again, eventually the harvest will grow so large that you can't help but to see it. Further, the harvest growing around her feet in this dream represents the harvest of souls connected to her getting it right. What God has purposed you to become is bigger than you. When we choose to pass the test, we are growing and we are evolving. But more than that, we're expanding our territory. There are nations, there are inhabitants, there's a harvest of souls waiting on our obedience. Perhaps sometimes in order to put things into perspective, we should start focusing less on what's on the other side of our obedience and focusing more on what's on the other side of our disobedience. I dream of a man sitting inside of some type of sea creature, maybe a whale or a shark. Inside of this fish was a staircase leading toward his teeth, which was the exit. On the stairs were the alphabets from the letters A to F. So each step had a letter of the alphabet from A, B, C, D, E, and F. As he walked up the steps and 
tried to exit, he was not allowed to leave. After he sat a while, I saw the letters reverse from F to A. So then the top letter was an A and not an F. After the man landed on the letter A, he was then permitted to exit the fish. So of course this dream immediately reminded me of the story of Jonah. God had given Jonah an assignment to lead the people of Nineveh to him. However, he decided to ignore God and go into the opposite direction that God was sending him. See, Jonah did not feel as though the people of Nineveh deserved a chance. He was discriminating against them. So in order to remove this dross, in order to remove these impurities from Jonah's heart, in order to pull gold from Jonah, scripture says that God prepared Jonah a test. God prepared a fish, a whale, to swallow him whole. The word prepared there is malna. It means to appoint or to enroll. So in essence, God enrolls Jonah into his institution of higher learning to purify Jonah's heart so that he can understand the gravity of his disobedience and so that he could complete his assignment. So like Jonah, the man in his dream sat in the belly of a fish. Sitting represents a time of learning that represents sitting at the feet of God. In this dream, the man becomes impatient and decides to get up and to walk up the steps. He started with the letter A and ended up on the top step, which was the letter F. So in total, there were six steps. The number six in the word of God represents human effort. In our local school system, the letter A is a passing grade and the letter F is a a failing grade. So when this man gets up in his own effort and attempts to exit this fish, he ends up on the letter F, meaning he failed the test. Because of his impatience and because he attempted to move prematurely, he was required to sit back down at the feet of God. He needed to wait on the fullness of time. The fullness of time, as discussed earlier, resembles a pregnant woman about to give birth. The baby cannot stay in the womb forever. There's an appointed time for that baby to come forth and God knows the exact time and the moment of that birth. So this man was required to sit in the belly of the fish. The word belly is ma'al. It means womb. So this implies that the man would not have to sit in the belly of this fish forever, that God had an appointed time to release him, but he needed to wait on that appointed time. There were some things that he needed to learn because the fact that the alphabet was used in this dream reminds me of elementary school. It's in elementary school or even preschool now where the alphabet is being taught. There's a scripture that says that we need to move beyond the elementary things and into maturity. God wanted to mature him, but he needed to be patient. After he sits at the feet of God a while, the letters of the alphabet on the steps were reversed. The letter A is now the top step and the letter F is now the bottom step. So now when he walks up the steps, he lands on the letter A. This is a passing score. Because he was able to pass this test, God reversed things for him. He turned his situation around. The key to passing the test that God places before us is moving beyond stages of immaturity where we rely solely on how the test makes us feel. We must mature and move beyond the seasons of where we try to manipulate things so that we can exit quickly. This is actually the time to hold on because we pass tests when we stay the course, even when we don't feel like doing what God has told us to do. I had a word only dream in 2018. I heard, graduate from God's master's degree program, a study called Commitment, Contentment, and Purpose in God. When God has designed your life to be one of great purpose, he will hold you to a greater level of commitment while asking you to be content so that you can master what he has ordained for you to accomplish. Therefore, I encourage you today that whatever that test is that God is taking you through, face it head on, knowing that when you pass it, you will then pass on to your next level of promotion. Father, thank you for being an all-wise God who knows the way that we take. We know that as long as we are in your care, you will continue to allow us to face tests, not to harm or to hold us back, but to elevate and to promote us. Continue to grow us, dear Lord, according to your divine will, according to your intricate knowledge of what we need specifically. Thank you for purifying our hearts and aligning our spirits with your great will and your great purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. I pray that you have a wonderful weekend and week as God moves you through tests and trials and that you rise up victoriously. Thank you for watching.